Hey guys, what's up? This is Logic Crazy, and I'm Jonathan, and welcome to yet another Chess Engine tutorial. If you've tried to make this perfect debugger yet uh, on your own time, one of the first things you'll notice is that we're still lacking a make move method that takes four characters from our sequence of moves, that string, and actually enacts those moves out on a board. So uh, what we would ideally like to do is what I have created up here, this make move wrong. Now this would be just a simple method that would take in our move and all the boards and it would modify the boards. So that uh, it would take white, if it was a white king move, it would move, it would change the white king bit board. But in order to do that, um, we would have to then return all of the boards with their changed values. And in order to return multiple items, I'd have to combine them all into an array or something like that. And Java is slow, in my opinion, when it comes to arrays. I find it just bogs it down. So I have taken a different approach. And what we will call is a bunch of these, 12 of these commands, and then a separate one for Um And what these are is it'll take a board, let's say white pawn, and I put T there for temporary. So it takes this white pawn, and it sets it to the make move, and it takes the white pawn, and it makes a move on the white pawn. So each of the 12 pieces are dealt with, each of the 12 boards, I should say, are dealt with separately. Um, now, obviously, a lot of times, this make move won't do a thing. For instance, if, let's say, a pawn was moving forward, uh, when we call make move white pawn, it would return a different board than the white pawn. It would return one with one of the bits slightly moved. Um, but when it calls out this make move for white knight, nothing should change because only the pawn changed, unless, of course, it was a capturing a knight move. Um, and so we call out all 12 of these individually, and uh, that's sort of how I have it set up. So this char is a type, uh, so it'll represent a, a capital B for a white bishop and so on. And then we have our move, and we also have the original board that we're enacting the move on. So when we come to this method here, we divide it up into based on which kind of move is being made. One is a regular move. Now this does include, uh, it does include uh, castling, but I have not fully implemented that in just yet. So we will ignore that for the time being. And uh, if it's uh, the last digit in the four digit string is, or the last character I should say, is a digit, then it's considered a regular move. If it's a capital P, then it's a pawn promotion. And if it's a capital E, it's an en passant. And if it's something else, I have a little error printout that happens, which will just be useful for debugging purposes. And we'll eventually get rid of that once we've fully debugged it. So uh, let's start off with this regular move here. What we do is we create two integers, one called int start and one called int end. And what they are doing is they're defining the location of where the piece starts from and where the piece is going. So, for instance, if I went to our board here, this bottom left white pawn here, if it is in location uh, 48 right now, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way down to 48, and if it was to move one up, it would be moving to 40. So the start would be 48, the end would be 40. That's basically how that would go, and it uh, should be pretty simple the way I've multiplied the first digit, which represents the height, so to speak, uh, by 8, and then added uh, the horizontal dimension as well. Same at the end, just with instead of characters 0 and 1, I have characters 2 and 3. And then we actually make those moves. But we also need to make sure our, we, we don't make moves on every single board that comes along, only boards which apply. Now, here's how we do it. If the board shifted over by start and one, so basically what this statement says is, is the piece on the board that it starts off with? Is at the starting location the board? Um, 
if that's true, then what we know is that we are moving a piece uh, that is the same as type. So if type is a capital B for a white bishop, we know we're moving a white bishop if this comes true. For all the other boards, this will produce false. Only for the white bishop, it would produce two, assuming, of course, that char is a capital B. Um, so if we are dealing with the board that's about to move, then what we do is we remove the piece at the start. So we, basically, this line uh, puts a bit at the start, and then inverse and anding it together re uh, removes it. And then what we do is we add that piece to the end or the destination. And then for all the other boards, this else will apply. And what it will do is it will remove any pieces at the end location. And the reason for this is for capturing. So if my pawn was capturing a knight, let's say, then on the knight when uh, we're putting in the knight board for this make move, it will remove the knight. Um, moving on to the pawn promotion, we basically do the same. We have start and end, except here, depending on whether uh, it's a white move or a black pieces move, uh, I have this little if statement here. And the way we can tell is if uppercase of move.charat2. So the second from last character, if it is capital, then we know that we are promoting to a capital piece and therefore the ranks are basically the only thing that changes. The rank would be a 6, and uh, the end location would be a 7. That's one above it. And, of course, it would be a 1 to start off with to a rank of 0. And so what we do for these starts and ends is we basically just take the file and the rank, and that sort of uh, pinpoints the spot uh, of the start, uh, sort of like crosshairs, and then get long dot number of trailing zeros get turns that into a number. So uh, same applies uh, for blacks colors. And then again, we uh, just run this uh, based on what the type is. We either add a piece, remove and add a piece, or we remove a piece from the destination. Um, same goes for Enpassons. Very much the same here. Um, I might have a little bit more work to do with the emphasis. I'm not quite sure, but uh, that will all come into the debugging method. Um, the one last thing I've made here is a make move emphasis. And uh, this is needed to basically know uh, if, the, if there was a double pawn push. Uh, so that's when a pawn moves forward two spaces from its starting location. Then on that file, an en passant can happen. And so what we have to say is if it's a digit, first of all, so it's that type of move, a regular move, which uh, double pawn pushes would be included in, then if the move is uh, moves forward 2, so the move char at 0 and char at 2 equals 2, then we return file mask 8 of that uh, return the file that that pawn push occurred on. And if none of this is true, then we return zero, so that no end passants are allowed. Now, I'm already seeing here, as I, write, as I have written this down, we also need to make sure that the type is, is a, uh, um, a pawn, so that uh, because this double pawn push right now could also represent a rook, let's say, that's moving forward two spaces. So I'll have to add a little clause in there saying, uh, adding a type and making sure that that all works. So little mistakes like this will keep continuing to creep up during our debugging process. Um, and as I had said before, uh, the procedure to call the moves, I know it looks like real messy and takes up a few lines of code, but that's sort of how it is. Um, it's a lot nicer when we work in C or C++ when we have data types like structs. So anyways, I will leave it at that. Until next time, enjoy Java.